Hey everybody, it's Alistair and welcome back to Sapoti Saporium. It's been a little while, I'm out here in the backyard and I'm excited because it's springtime. Well, it's a couple of weeks away from spring and things are starting to happen. And in addition to the plants, one of the things that's happening is the bees are getting really active. And when I say bees, some people might know that I've got native bees. And there are funny little cute little guys that are um, only about a couple of millimetres long, or little girls, most of them. And we've got a couple of hives behind us here. So let's have a look and I might just do a basic overview about uh, keeping native bees and what's happening and what my experience has been with them. So let's have a look. Okay, so here they are. This is what they look like. Each hive contains about 10,000 bees. Uh, these are native Australian bees, uh, Tetragonula carbonaria, and they're a stingless bee, so they don't sting you. They're very small, they're about the size of a little blowfly, or a little bushfly, I should say. So what they're doing now is they're busy out collecting nectar and pollen, and also some resin for their hive and they're building away inside. Um, so the hive is made up of two parts. You can see the bottom part here is one section of the hive and then there's another section here. So these are the two main sections. What we do when it comes to uh, springtime, each year we split the hive. So these are made up from two sections. We split it in half and we put the bottom half containing brood which is their eggs and some of their honey stores with a new top. And then we do the opposite here. We take the top, which has got its brood and its um, honey stores in there, and we connect it to a fresh new bottom, creating two hives. And that's called splitting the hive. So that's how we can multiply our hives. In addition to that, if we look up, we've got our honey super on top. So that's a beekeeping term which means it's another compartment in which the bees will put most of their honey stores in there, we hope. This one's split up into two sections. It's a bit sort of rudimentary at the moment. It's got gaffer tape holding the two sections together. But basically there's a area, a thin area at the back there that allows bees to come from this up into the honey section. So they're less likely to store their brood, which is their, um, their eggs, um, they're less likely to do that and store their honey in this section here. So what we might do is um, probably, you know, when it's sort of mid spring, we'll split this hive and we'll check to see if we've got honey up there in the top. So over here, we've got something interesting going on. We've got a hive connected to another hive. Now the reason for that is this front hive here was a bit weak. So we're coming out of winter and I noticed that there was some um, structure inside the hive but there was no honey in the honey pots and there was only a few bees in there. So I was about to lose the hive so I sort of searched up um, some of the really helpful groups uh, on Facebook uh, that, that specialise in native bees and somebody suggested or a few people suggested that I perform an adduction. So what that means is that I've got a strong, healthy hive at the back connected to this front hive. So you can see here that this is a piece of poly pipe that's connecting the two hives together. So bees are moving from this back hive into the front hive. And they have to go all the way through this hive to come out the front here. And the idea is that once they've built up their structure inside, they've made honey pots, hopefully they've laid some eggs in this new section and there'll be a queen that will uh, hatch out and become a queen for this section. Now, the bees won't like it if they're all connected up like this for too long. So once we get going, once we think we've got enough uh, brood and enough uh, structure in this front hive, I'll disconnect the hive. The way that I'll do that is I've got a T section here that we saw before and with that section I'll take that tape off and some bees will be able to enter this hive directly 
and then hopefully other bees will continue to enter from here into this other hive. Okay, so underneath this is an inspection panel, which is a piece of acetate. And underneath we can see that the bees are creating structure all the way around here. And they're building up that structure inside there, making a very strong hive. So probably within a month or so, I'll disconnect these hives and hopefully we'll have two hives. So a couple of the commonly asked questions about native bees is, can I keep them at home? Uh, do they sting? No, they don't. Um, they're very quiet, very peaceful. They're fantastic to watch, a great hobby. Uh, one of the other questions is, can I harvest honey from them? Yes, you can. Uh, there was a myth going around that you couldn't harvest honey in Sydney. And that's only true of whether you're in a cold elevation. If you're getting frosts and things like that, you, you probably won't be able to harvest um, honey because they need so much more of that honey during winter. But in Sydney, where we are, we're on the coast here or very close to the coast, uh, two kilometres from the coast, not a problem whatsoever. You can not only split a hive, but you can also harvest honey at the same time and have a very healthy hive the next year. So how much honey do they produce? About one litre per hive. So give or take, it might be half a litre or it might be a litre and it does depend on where you live. The range of native bees, stingless bees in Australia, uh, extends from the tropics right down to about the Victorian border on the coast. So uh, you, they're not found naturally any further south than that. And you can't really keep them in cold climates because um, they need to be warm inside their hive and they need to be able to fly when the temperature is at 20 degrees. So it needs a certain number of days above 20 degrees. So it's really interesting when you see the hives, you watch the uh, hives and you know once it's hit 20 degrees and the hives warmed up and the bees are off and foraging for the day. So it's a fantastic hobby and I hope that um, people, if, you, if you're interested in finding out about native bees, look up um, some of the associations and look up online and you might be able to secure yourself a box uh, with some bees in it at some stage and then you're off and running because after you establish your hive, you can then split them and keep multiplying them um, in theory each year uh, exponentially. So what a great hobby and the honey, by the way, tastes absolutely beautiful. It's a bit more uh, acidic and a lot more runny, a lot more viscous than normal honey. So it's, it's a real treat and a real delicacy and it sells for hundreds of dollars um, per litre. So it's, um, and it's, it's extremely um, good for you as well. So anyway, that's a little bit of an overview on native bees and we've found them to be a, a wonderful hobby and um, yeah, just a real pleasure to have around the backyard and also pollinating our, um, our tropical plants as well and doing a great job for uh, plants around the place.